Hey everyone, it's Carlos PC747. Welcome to the channel. I have a question for you. Should the FAA be held partially responsible for a series of small jet crashes that continue to occur because pilots are allowed to attempt circling approaches in marginal weather conditions that are so low that they're maneuvering too close to these airports and in so doing, they are setting themselves up for failure. I think so. There is a reason airline companies don't train circling approaches for their pilots because they are dangerous. Although I have six type ratings on my own pilot's license above, I have the same weather limitations as other airline pilots do on any aircraft in which we did not practice circling approaches when the conditions were IFR. You may have noticed that I did not have those restrictions on my other type ratings, and that's just because I did practice circling approaches in all those aircraft in the simulator. The first four accidents I'm going to discuss all occurred in layer 35As, like this one. I operated layer 35s as a captain for many years. The layer 35 is a very demanding and unforgiving jet aircraft. When the aircraft was certified, it came with seven different wings, including Century 3, Soft Flight, and Mark IV, because the builders couldn't decide which wing was best. But the most alarming statistic by far are the sheer number of experienced Learjet pilots who have been killed in Learjets for operating the aircraft outside normal parameters. The first accident occurred in San Diego several years ago and it was nationwide news. After the pilots flew over the airport, they started maneuvering too close to it to not lose sight of it and experienced an accelerated stall. What you may not know is that the tower allowed the pilots to cancel their IFR flight plan when the weather had actually gone down to IFR conditions. Did you notice how low the clouds really were in that last video clip? The pilots were maneuvering when it was less than three miles visibility. The visibility was actually just two and a half miles. And they were also only flying at half the altitude they should have been of 1,440 feet. Would the difference in visibilities have made any difference in this accident? I don't think so. In Learjet pilot training, we are taught to never exceed medium bank turns at low altitude and at slow speeds for obvious reasons, but these pilots are continuing to do it to not lose sight of the airports. This second accident involved a Lear 35A as well into Truckee. The weather conditions were marginal again with low clouds and low visibilities. And as a result, the pilots maneuvered too close to the airport. This accident really hits close to home for me because several years earlier, while I was operating Lear 35s, I had an opportunity to fly passengers from Dallas into Truckee during similar marginal weather conditions. Now back then, there was only an instrument approach into the shorter runway, and I would have had to circle just like these pilots tried to. And I looked at the weather and I told myself, there is no way I'm going to attempt to do that. So I flew the passengers to Reno instead. This third accident involved a layer 35 as well in the Chicago area. Moderate icing was forecast in the area and the pilots had seen and knew that their aircraft had ice on it. They were even experiencing unusual control difficulties, but they did not put two and two together and fly faster and they stalled. The fourth accident occurred in a Lear 35A as well, and although marginal weather was not a factor, the criticality of performing these maneuvers the way you're trained is crucial. I am not even going to begin to list all the different things that went wrong with this flight. Aircraft have maneuvering limitations for a reason and a Learjet is no different than any other aircraft. The limitations must be respected, particularly at low altitudes. 
if you choose to not respect the maneuvering limitations as you were trained in flight school, then you will have to pay the consequences. And that's exactly what happened here. The fifth and final accident I'm going to discuss occurred in a Challenger 605 up in Truckee, California. Just a couple years ago, it became national news. There were forest fires that were occurring in the area and as a result, the visibility was marginal at best. And as a result, I mean, there were a lot of mistakes made in this flight. And you can read the accident report sometime if you'd like. But you've heard it all before. Due to the reduced visibility, the pilots maneuvered the aircraft too close to the airport, thereby setting themselves up for failure. Truckee is a high altitude airport surrounded by mountains. And when the weather conditions are not the best, you can only approach it from the north or from the west. Although the pilots had already set up the approach for the much longer runway, aircraft were arriving to the much shorter runway and they followed suit, in my opinion, because they did not want to accept any delays. The aircraft's actual and optimal flight paths are shown. But the most tragic thing of all was that unlike the other accidents, these pilots had a choice to arrive from a completely different direction. You may be asking yourself, why didn't the pilots just execute a go around if the approach was so unstable? Continuation bias likely played a role and that's where the desire to complete the mission takes precedence over everything else. Here I am doing some 777 training. The biggest disadvantage small jet operators have with practicing circling approaches is they practice them primarily at the same airports. For me, that was JFK. After a while, we would use certain landmarks and be able to conduct the maneuvers perfectly, even in the most marginal weather conditions. But I want to make a confession. I told myself more than once while doing the maneuvers that if I wasn't in a simulator in such terrible conditions, I would never be operating an aircraft in such conditions in the real world. So why don't airlines conduct circling approaches? Well, there are several reasons. Number one, the safety risk is far higher. Typically after an instrument approach, a circling approach requires maneuvering real close to the ground in marginal weather conditions with low clouds. And that is a recipe for disaster. Number two, accident statistics. Too many to list in which aircraft, not just in the United States, but worldwide, have crashed as a result of attempting to complete circling approaches in marginal weather. One of the biggest advantages airline pilots have is the vastly reduced risk they enjoy by operating into such large airports with excellent approaches regardless of the direction they're coming from. However, smaller jet operators operating at airline speeds into smaller airports don't have those advantages. Number three, airline SOPs and risk management. Many airlines now prohibit circling approaches unless they are absolutely necessary like in an emergency or if it's a special use airport. Instead, they favor straight in approaches or RNAV, RNP procedures that keep the aircraft on a stable guided path all the way to touchdown. Number four, the weather minimums are higher for circling approaches. And this means that they can't be used in most low visibility situations anyway. And finally, number five, simulator training emphasis has just shifted. Pilots still get trained in circling in the simulator just for regulatory reasons only. But the real world frequency is extremely low. And I'll tell you, for me in particular, on the 7.4 and the 777, we never do circling approaches. It's just not necessary in visual conditions, let alone when the weather is not so good. What do you think could be done to prevent this from happening again? Some people think that the solution would be increasing the aircraft speeds, say by 10 knots. That would certainly help in one 
the guard, that would increase the speed above a stall, but it would also create a separate problem. If they're already maneuvering in such marginal weather conditions, it's gonna make it even tougher for them to maintain contact with the airport environment. In addition, if they're going faster, it's gonna make it tougher for them to maintain the same distance around the airport. So what's the solution? I think the FAA needs to actually increase the visibility minimum criteria substantially to prevent this once and for all from happening again. Please let me know what you think in the comments section and thanks so much for watching.